The Bernoulli equation is an important relation in fluid mechanics since it expresses the relationship between fluid pressure, velocity, and elevation for an incompressible fluid along a streamline. Bernoulli's theorem is based on four assumptions for fluid flow, frictionless, steady, incompressible, and along the same streamline. The test section is an accurately machined clear acrylic duct of a varying circular cross section. It is provided with a number of side hole pressure tappings which are connected to the manometers housed on the rig. These tappings allow the measurement of static pressure heads simultaneously at each of the six sections. The test section incorporates two unions, one at either end to facilitate reversal for convergent or divergent testing. A hypodermic probe is provided which may be positioned to read the total pressure head at any section of the duct. This total pressure head probe may be moved after slackening the gland nut. This nut should be retimed by hand. All eight pressure tappings are connected to a bank of pressurized manometer tubes. Before starting the experiment, set up the Bernoulli equation apparatus on the hydraulic bench so that the base is horizontal. Ensure that the test section has the 14 degree tapered section converging in the direction of flow. If you need to reverse the test section, the total pressure head probe must be withdrawn before releasing the mounting couplings. Ensure that the rig outflet tube is positioned above the volumetric tank. Connect the rig inlet to the bench flow supply. Close the bench valve and the apparatus flow control valve to start the pump. Gradually open the bench valve to fill the test rig with water. In order to bleed air from pressure tapping points and manometers, close both the bench valve, the rig valve, and open the air bleed screw. Now open the bench valve and allow flow through the manometers to purge all air from them. Then tie in the air bleed screw and partially open the test rig flow control valve. Next, open the air bleed screw slightly to allow air to enter the top of the manometers. You may need to adjust both valves in order to achieve this. Retie the screw when the manometer levels reach a convenient height. This maximum volume flow rate will be determined by the need to have the maximum H1 and minimum H5 manometer readings both on scale. Readings should be taken at three flow rates. Take the first set of readings at the maximum flow rate possible with all manometers reading on the baseboard. Then reduce the volume flow rate to give the H1 through H5 head difference of about 50 millimeters. Finally, repeat the whole process for one further flow rate set to give H1 to H5 difference approximately halfway between that obtained in the above two tests. Take readings of the H1 to H6 manometers when the levels have steadied. Ensure that the total pressure probe is retracted from the test section. You should carry out a time volume collection using the volumetric tank in order to determine the volume flow rate. This is achieved by closing the ball valve and measuring with a stopwatch the time taken to accumulate a known volume of fluid in the tank, which is read from the side glass. You should collect fluid for at least one minute to minimize timing errors. Measure the total pressure head distribution by traversing the total pressure probe along the length of the test section at points A to F. The datum line is the side hole pressure tapping A associated with manometer H1. Finally, you may reverse the text section in order to see the effects of a more rapid converging section. Ensure that the total pressure probe is fully withdrawn from the test section but not pulled out of its guide in the downstream coupling. Unscrew the two couplings, remove the test section and reverse it then reassemble by tightening the coupling. Repeat the set of readings as before. Be sure to clean up your station and any water that may have spilled. Following the lab manual, complete the results table and put together your lab report. If you have any questions, consult your teaching assistant or professor.